Merry what Christmas. I call happy Shrekmas. Happy Shrekmas. <laughs> can, can you give that to me later on? Like, no, I'm giving you? it to you. Now. Oh yeah, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. What did they give you? Yeah, so what I'm doing, I actually got Ali Dawa already, so I'm going behind people yeah. and doing the old. And when they turn around, they go, Happy Shadikmas! <laughs> so I'm just so what, trying what, to. What did Bob give you? Though? Oh, he's actually giving me the Bible. So oh, thank okay, you a lot, man. Is this, the, is this the Old Testament and the New Testament together? Old and New Testament All right. together. All right. yeah. I'll, I'll actually read it. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in to kind of go through it. Yeah. And maybe one day we'll have a chat about it. Yeah, well, if you, if you start reading it, I'd, I'd suggest you start in the New Testament rather than the Old. Is there any reason why? Yes. Because the New Testament is the new co is the new covenant, yeah, yeah. and the Old Testament is the old covenant, and because the new covenant is 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 the fulfilment of the old, yeah. you now need to read new covenant first and then old covenant. All right. And what I mean, if I was to read the other way around, would that would that kind of well, it would just mean it, it would take you a long, long time to get to where you need to be. All right. In terms of understanding the importance of. Christ. And so, what do I do about some of the old? Um, you know, like, you know, I've heard a lot of Christians say some of the Old uh, Testament isn't applicable to Christians. So, I mean, is there a way to kind of decide what's not and what is? Yeah, there is. Um, in terms of in terms of that which is connected to um, the sacrificial mosaic law, yeah. um, as opposed to natural law, yeah. th those aspects are not applicable. All right. <laughs> but you won't be able to just read it. I've only got that. Steve. Shall we move away from the, the loudspeaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, so it's probably best for me to, to yeah, I mean, I'll take your advice. And I'll, uh, because obviously you're, you're a Christian, so you've given it from a Christian yeah. point of view. And so I'll, I'll read the, the, the is, is it actually separated quite clearly? Yeah, yeah, blatantly. blatantly. Oh, right. If you go, if you, you jump to Mark, the Gospel of Mark, yeah, yeah. you can start there. All right. You know, and then and then read it from there. Write down any questions you have, yeah. and then we'll go through them. I still haven't gone through the Quran though. I've got uh, no offense to the Quran. No offense, but you don't need to go through it. No, I tried. I tried. The Quran, I tried, the Quran would just be a waste of your time. I was just. I, I'm. I'm more. I, I'm hoping that. Uh, don't take offense. But I'm hoping that the uh, Bible is more of a Game of Thrones than a Lord of the Rings. Can you, can you, can you... Because Game of Thrones is something that I love, it's exciting. Lord of the Rings is a bit wishy-washy, a bit boring. Man, so. Can you, I mean, no, no, you can't read Arabic, I can't read Arabic, no, no, so no, neither no. of us can read the Quran. Yeah, yeah. So it's a waste of your time. Because yeah, the I mean, translation, it, whenever it says anything that, that, that is embarrassing to Islam, yeah. Muslims will be quick to say, well, that's just the translation. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in the Christian faith, we believe that, that God can speak and does speak in the person of Jesus Christ yeah. as the Logos becomes flesh. He becomes man. All right, so, uh, and just, so just, just so that um, people know, uh, Bob the Builder has given me a Bible. Christmas presents. Old, older than New Testament. And so obviously it's Christmas time and I've got my little uh, George, uh, the little uh, Santa Claus here as well. So I'm going to read it. I mean, hopefully I can uh, speak to Bob with a bit more knowledge in the future. Because yeah. I, I, obviously a lot of people have their information about Christianity from media. Yeah. And so we have a skewed version of what we think Christianity is. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. The, 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 the British media presents Christianity as a characterization of itself. Yeah. As a do-gooder, wishy-washy, liberal, uh, you know, that, that, that's their view yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Christian faith. And sadly, the, the level of discipleship is so poor in many fellowships in Western Europe that lots of Christians actually think that that characterization is, is what Christianity should be. Yeah. So they try to live up to it. Yeah. And, and no wonder those fellowships that are trying to live up to that are the ones that are dying. Yeah. Because it's not a real identity. But I, I, do the, I do see the I do see the Christians Christianity, are, Christianity yeah. is an identity. Yeah. Like Sikhism is an identity. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that means that it's a it's a people with a history and a sense of their own place in time yeah. and and in terms of civilization. Right. But we as Christians need to recapture that. Yeah. yeah, I'm not inviting you to practice a religion as such yeah. as to embrace a new identity in Christ. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, I don't want you to replace the 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 the, the practices of the Sikh temple yeah. with the practices of the Christian temple. Yeah. I want you to replace in your heart where you feel you believe yeah. and where you feel your identity is yeah. from Sikhism to Christianity. I, I mean, uh, don't, I don't want to kind of like... Uh, You're not going to offend me. No, I'm not going to offend you, but the same, same way I say to Muslims and I say to uh, Christians, my idea of um, what who God is and what 
God represents is quite different from what you might uh, the Abrahamic thing. So I know people don't like using the word Abrahamic, but there's a different kind of, uh, let's just say, persona of what we believe God is. Mm. And so it's hard for me to shift from that yep. to any of the Abrahamic faiths, whether it's Judaism, whether it's Christianity or Islam. Obviously, out of the three, I think the most uh, compassionate is definitely Christianity. Um, can I, can I yeah. just address that point? Because this is a common misnomer in, in Western society. There aren't three Abrahamic faiths. Yeah. There is one Abrahamic faith that is the Judeo-Christian faith. Yeah. The faith that was given to Abraham, the covenant that was given to Abraham that was fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That is the only Abrahamic faith. Right, there, so what, what, there why are three. So who's, because uh, it's quite interesting about the concept of the Abrahamic faith. I think most Muslims would say they're part of the, the obviously you might find it offensive, but they believe that Jesus was a, yeah, was a Muslim. Yeah, I'm, 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 so, so, I'm not a soy boy, so I don't get offended. Yeah, so, so basically, I mean, from, from your standpoint, why are they why are they not part of that Abrahamic faith? Because when okay, I when I when yeah. I look at it, they do believe not, not, not in Jesus Christ or you do, let, but they do but yeah, they do me, believe. I'll address that point directly. Yeah. So so the, the, the thing is if you, you look at covenantal history, yeah. God is a God who establishes covenants. He establishes a covenant with Abraham. He establishes a covenant um, with Jacob, yeah. uh, which is a covenant with um, Israel. Yeah. He establishes a covenant through Moses. Yeah. He talks in the prophets about a new covenant coming. Yeah. Right. And that new covenant begins with the arrival of the Messiah. Yeah. So when Christ Jesus, the Messiah, mm. turns up, he turns up and he is the fulfillment of all the previous covenants, which now become redundant right. because they are fulfilled. So if they're yeah. fulfilled, they're, they're no longer practiced. Yeah. And the reason why we know Islam doesn't fit into that Abrahamic mold is because the, 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 the God of the Quran and their image of Jesus yeah. is a completely yeah, yeah, different yeah. image of God and it's a completely different image of Jesus. Yeah, it's Jesus. quite disingenuous when I hear Muslims say we believe in Jesus because they don't really. No, they, they believe in the Quranic Jesus. Yeah, yeah, which isn't really Jesus. Which isn't that, the historical the Jesus, yeah. and it certainly isn't the Jesus of, of the New Testament. Yeah. Uh, and, and so their their Jesus is a ahistorical construct of Muhammad and later Muslim scholars. Yeah. That excludes them from the Abrahamic faith. This this terminology has come to us because of liberal politics. Liberal politicians who want to create a sense of social cohesion in this country want to diminish those things that divide us. So one of the things that divides us is our view of Christ, is our view of, of, of who Jesus is. And so, um, as Christ said, you're either for me or against me. Yeah. You're either gathering in with me or you're scattering abroad. I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword to turn son against father and daughter against mother, yeah. that two in one house shall be against three and three against two. Christ didn't say that he'd come to bring peace and some liberal hippie commune. He came and in his coming, he becomes the touchstone upon which humanity divides yeah. those that are for him and those that are against him and and the Muslims are against him the, the li that goes against the liberal political narrative yeah. that wants to diminish divisions so we can have social cohesion yeah. because if we actually say that there's something more important than social cohesion and that's Jesus Christ then suddenly that becomes a narrative that is unhelpful to the liberal establishment who just want us all to get along so that we continue to produce within the economy so that the liberal establishment can get rich whilst we all serve their ends and oh, their needs. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad like when you go around England or the UK and all these churches have been renovated into, I mean, I know, I mean, I know a couple of uh, churches that have been renovated into temples, Sikh temples. Yeah. And you know, for us it's a, it's a good thing, but it's also a sad thing because you have another place of worship yeah. that is closed down. How do you think as the Christian faith, you're going to be able to kind of regain that momentum to kind of get the churches back up and running and people going to yeah. church on Sundays? Well, is that it, possible? Firstly, firstly, it, it, it is sad. But it, it, it's, it's a disaster of our own making. Christians have done this to themselves because what we've replaced 
a real Christian identity with yeah. is a civic sense of religion. Yeah. So many of the church leaders yeah. treat the church as an institution and the Christians as a body of people yeah. as simply a, 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 a civic society within liberal civic society yeah. that's there to be an NGO. Yeah. And if that is all you're offering, of course you're going to die. Mm. Because if you're not saying that you alone stand on the truth and that you have these hard frontiers of your own identity, mm. but you're some amorphic mass that melts into the wider homogeny mm. of peoples, then obviously it's very easy for you to leave the faith and not very easy to enter it. Mm. Or it's very easy to enter in and out as you wish. Mm. So these fellowships that are practicing liberal civic religion are all dying yeah. and unfortunately they're some of the bigger churches what as Christians we have to rediscover to answer your question directly is that a, a strong sense of our own identity as disciples of Christ as a people a holy nation a royal priesthood as a people set apart unto the Lord yeah. with our own history which is not European history with our own traditions, with our own values, with our own moral system. And we need to say, this is who we are. We aren't the Sikhs. We aren't the Muslims. We aren't the English. We are the Christians. And to be proud of it as well. And to be proud of it. It's got to be It's got to be a muscular thing. Uh, one thing I do want to kind of ask, because I've said this on a live stream, but I find uh, the way Christmas has been kind of uh, made into this kind of like, I don't know, uh, materialistic uh, time, it's, it's kind of offensive in a way. If I was a Christian, I'd find it kind of offensive. Yeah. Well, would, I'm, would you I'm, find it offensive? I'm, like it's I'm, not a, this commercial? I, I, I'm not a soy boy, so yeah. I'm not easily offended. Yeah. But what's happening in Western Europe is that it is a repeat of history. Uh, over a thousand years ago, Christians, as they converted the Roman Empire, yeah. turned the celebration of the unconquerable son, a pagan festival, yeah into a celebration of the birth of Christ yeah. who conquers the darkness. Yeah. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Yeah. But as society has de-Christianized, they have now turned Christmas, the 25th of December, into a celebration of material consumerism. Yeah. Now that material consumerism, as well as being harmful to the environment and disastrous for liberal society, demonstrates we don't have any profound sense of our own history, any profound sense of our own identity or our, our own heritage. And so it's sad, but it's inevitable, because if you live in a culture that doesn't have any real sense of itself or any real sense of its identity, then naturally consumerism which is all about the surface presentation of things, yeah. we'll, we'll get to grips with that. Right. And it's a sign that the English, the English have lost sight of the real meaning of Christmas, right. that they have transformed it and turned it into yeah. simply a giving of presents. Yeah which incidentally is a Christian tradition. I mean, well, what's the, what's the, what's the, I mean, obviously I've got a little Father Christmas here. Yeah. But what's, are you, do you find the Father Christmas or something less I don't offensive? I, I, or, I, I don't do you find it offensive or do you just not care? I, I, I don't celebrate Pepsi's or Coca-Cola's mm. version of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is the day that we celebrate. Right. And so what's St. Nicholas famous for? He's famous for giving presents to children and punching heretics. He attended the council. He he attended the council. That's a good good one, right? Yeah, he attended the council of Nicaea, and when he ran out of presents to give to kids, he went and punched Arius in the face. All right. So, you know, it's a very different, it's a very different image. Yeah. It's it's like a lot of the saints and the the, the, the celebrations of the saints, like Saint Valentine. Yeah. We see Saint Valentine as a celebration of romantic love, yeah. but actually. The, the real historical roots of the celebration of St. Valentine was a celebration of the courage of love. Yeah. Because St. Valentine went to his death for being a Christian. Yeah. And, and what he's famous for is encouraging and, and secretly marrying Christians yeah. at a time when marrying Christians was illegal. Right. And then he went and died for it. Yeah. And in a modern age when we lost uh, a culture of martyrdom, something that the church desperately needs to rediscover, the idea of being courageous in love became yeah. about showing your love to someone yeah. at the risk of being rejected because that was an act of heroism in love. So in every sense, we've lost our roots, our, co our connectivity to these Christian traditions. Yeah. 
because All the Saints Days was an essentially a replacement of all the pagan gods. There was a pagan god for everything. Yeah. Building roads had a pagan god. Yeah. And the Christians, when they converted all these public holidays, they just put a saint on top of one of these days yeah. and made that particular saint about a particular thing. So you got the patron saint of this and the patron saint of that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that. So, I mean, in terms of Catholicism, we, we know that a lot of the pagan holidays just kind of like shifted over. Christianized. Uh, Christianized. Yeah. And we're I not mean, ashamed of it and we're yeah. not embarrassed. Because I, I say this, whether Jesus was born in December, or whether he was born in January, or whether he was born in Asia, if he was born, yeah. And you may not know the exact date, but you're still celebrating his birth rather than the actual specific yeah, date. Yeah, 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 totally. So, I mean, I've never really had, a, had a, an issue with it. What I have an issue is with it is like, you know, when we have our kind of seat festivals, uh, if I was to see it become very commercialised and, you know, all people are going around just thinking about materialism, it would offend me as somebody from that particular faith. So when I see Christians, I'm just wondering how, how do they feel when they see that, you know, you've got all of this kind of winter wonderland and all this kind of... Or do you just detach yourself from well, that? I mean, you've got to understand, like, the way that consumerism works is it makes... It, it latches itself onto a visible consumer. Yeah. yeah? So, so when it's got an opportunity to sell something, it will produce the products to sell it yeah. like that one, Hence that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as Christians the, the tradition of giving gifts at Christmas yeah. is a thoroughly Christian tradition yeah. it's a thoroughly Christian tradition because Saint Nicholas gave yeah. gifts to children yeah, yeah. which is a good thing which Very we good. celebrate yeah, yeah. around the 25th of December yeah. and Christ himself is God's gift to the world yeah. because Christ it was sent by the Father into the world as a gift. Yeah. I mean, and incidentally, and incidentally, you know, it's one of the reasons why we know Christ is God, yeah. because Christ was proclaimed in the Gospel of Luke as the Son of God. Yeah. Now, Luke was writing to a uh, Roman pagan audience, and Son of God was a title that was given to Caesar, who was considered God. Yeah, at the time of Christ. So when Saint Luke takes this title that we also find in Mark and we also find in Matthew, notice the Dawah team once again and their good manners. So when we when we find this in the Gospel of Luke, we see this inscription. Yes, we believe in one God. Yeah, yeah. In, 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 and we also believe in one Saint Nick as well. So in terms of in terms of these things, we see that that Christ, the, the Son of God, uh, is a, a divine title. Are you listening to me, Raj? Yeah. So so that's a divine title. Christ was king at his birth. That's now, Raj's own pleasure. Perhaps. Let me ask you this question. How can anyone be king at their birth? I don't think they could. Exactly. Yeah. They can be a prince. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. For now. They can be a prince, but they can't be a king. Yeah, yeah. obviously. But yeah. it's it would teach us that Christ was king at his birth. Right. If he was king at his birth, that means that his status is above that of any any other king. Yeah. All right. So this is a proclamation of Christ's divinity. Yeah that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that he is the Son of God, which to a Judeo-Roman audience is a divine title. They would have heard that quite clearly. Let me ask you this question, Raju. What Raju is my... Uh, actor. No, it's cool. That's what my family called me. Okay, do you want me to call you? No, that's cool. It's cool. I don't mind. Raju or Raju. Raju. So tell me, like, so, so tell me, what does Jesus, who does Jesus, what, what, who is Jesus to you? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, my, Jesus to me is more of a, a role model of how I think you know human beings want to be a, a good person and a, and a, a, just, a just person. Uh, it's, a, it's a great role model as somebody to emulate. Yeah. Uh, do I specifically believe he was um, God, uh, in my opinion? I, I haven't got the proof of it myself. Yeah. But do we I, do now, it's in your back. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll read it. So for me, as, a, as, as an individual who I can look at and go, all right, is this an individual uh, I think can kind of like make uh, people into good, uh, uh, good kind of just people, he's an amazing individual for that. Uh, do yeah. I, so it's, it's that, that's how I see him as a, as a great role model for humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just watching Mo embarrassing himself in front of him. <laughs> so in terms of in terms of in terms of who Christ is yeah. one of the one of the great fallacies that that happens in western society is we like to separate Jesus out as a moral example yeah. from his identity mm. and i don't think you can do that yeah. because all of the things 
that testify to Jesus' good moral example yeah. also testify to his divine and human nature. So, so uh, uh, my, 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 don't, don't, he's don't about, bite. No, no, he's, don't he's bite. swearing. Man. Don't bite. Don't bite. Oh, let, no. let him embarrass himself. So, in terms of in terms of in terms of that that evidence Shut that up, demonstrate that Christ yeah, yeah, that Christ yeah, is a a good moral example. Yeah, yeah. Also demonstrate Christ's divinity, yeah, yeah. and you can't separate those two things. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I can personally. Uh, I know can. you do. I know I, you I, do. Know, I do. But okay. So for, for for you, it's going to be hard to understand that. But I do see. Uh, I can kind of separate the two and say, all right, I don't really believe in uh, all of these miracles and stuff. But as an individual, as an, as a person, I can say that he's a just and moral individual. That uh, if you I just want to say one thing. I love no. Christians. I love no. Jesus. No. I love Merry Christmas all the time. I You're embarrassing you. yourself, yeah. brother. Let's no. <laughs> no, 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 let's get serious. If you want to, no, 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 you want to come in, if you want to come in, stop forcing yourself. Hold on, as a Muslim, because we're talking about Jesus. We're not even talking about Islam. I love Jesus. And the Dawah team seek to force their way into a conversation. And that, that happens all the time. Yeah? So, go on. We were, we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you said you don't believe in the miracles and things. I'm, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't believe in... Um, because I, I, I wasn't there. But what, what I'll say, when I look at Jesus as a, as a historical figure, yeah. I, I look at his, uh, what I call his moral decisions and what he decided to do, not necessarily uh, the kind of miracles in himself. Do you understand? But let me, let me, let me, but let me, that, like... There's a couple of things. Firstly, the New Testament is very clear that the miracles are there to demonstrate the coming of the kingdom of God. Christ preached the coming of the kingdom of God. That was his gospel to preach God's kingdom. And, and he connected the coming of that kingdom with his own presence. In terms of, in terms of the evidence, would you agree that what you're doing then is being selective with the evidence? You're, you're picking that evidence that you like and ignoring that evidence that challenges you. Uh, I mean, I, the thing is, I'm gonna have to read the Bible yeah. to really understand because my version of Jesus Christ, I probably think is a skewered uh, Hollywood version. And so I don't really want to uh, do him disservice because I think I don't have the right image of Jesus, who Fair Jesus enough. is. So let me read the Bible, I'll do the, uh, the New Testament, and then we can talk about what I've read from that. Yeah. So I don't want to prejudge who Jesus is according to say a Hollywood movie from the 60s because that's the only information I really have about Jesus apart from speaking to yourself yeah so we could kind of like do another conversation about it once I've got more information well, about yeah it. read read through the Gospels yeah. write down all your questions yeah. and we'll meet up again outside yeah, the park yeah. and we'll talk about it right. anyway Merry Christmas Merry Christmas oh, Merry Christmas guys. and Merry Christmas as well Oh, I just wanted to say Mary 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 ISIS, Mary. fuck ISIS, fuck ISIS and their bloody fucking crew. Yeah. Fuck, Amen. fuck Amen. ISIS, ISIS fucked, get fucked by ghosts because they're it? fucked. They're the yeah, perverted King son of, of ISIS are perverted son of piece of shit that just go and destroy Islam. Islam and Christian are love together. No. Jesus and Muhammad is his cousin are love. I fear he's gonna kiss me. <laughs> Listen, we are the first people to fuck up ISIS. I will fuck ISIS. I will fuck ISIS and put- That's Haram, that's Haram. Okay, I will do it. Not literally. Not like that. I will, put, I will send ISIS back to hell where they belong with Satan. They'll, you know when they- uh, ISIS okay. belong Mo, in hell. Oh, fuck go. their oh, fucking oh, oh, piece of oh, shit. Just for oh, the record. Fuck yourself, you dirty just scum. Just for the record. You, you represent Satan, you bastard. Just for the ISIS. record, you do jihad the you idea, with each other. The idea that yourself. ISIS are servants Fuck of ISIS. Satan, I totally agree with. Exactly. The crimes that Jesus. they have committed against the Yazidis, against the Shia, and against, against my own people, the Christians. I mean that they have to be opposed. They have to be opposed. Oh, yeah. this is Isa anyway, again. He's got a great back. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love Jesus. I love my Christian brothers. I love my Christian brothers. No, 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 I love Jesus! He's running away because I wanted to debate him about Sikhism and Christianity. <laughs> <laughs>